this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm Bishop William Byrne inviting you to radiate the light of Christ by making a gift to the annual Catholic Appeal. The ministries and agencies supported with your generosity help thousands of our neighbors throughout Western Massachusetts. On behalf of the people we serve, thank you. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good morning and welcome to the Chalice of Salvation. I'm Sharon Rulier coming to you from the Holy Spirit Chapel at St. Michael's Cathedral in Springfield on this, the third Sunday in Advent. This third week of Advent is also known as Gaudete Sunday or Joy in Latin. Today, a theme of joy runs through our readings. Isaiah, returning to the Promised Land after years of exile, describes the wonders God will accomplish. In the psalm response, we sing that our souls rejoice in our God. Paul closes his letter to the Thessalonians by reminding them to rejoice always. And finally, we hear John the Baptist testify that he's not even worthy to untie the sandal straps of the one who is coming, the light, the Christ. May the joy we hear in God's word stay with us. Joining us as our celebrant today is Father James Nolte, pastor of St. Patrick's Parish in South Hadley. With Father Nolte at the altar is his parish deacon, David Bergeron. Members of the St. Patrick's Parish community are also with us in the chapel today and will be our readers and music ministers. Welcome one and all. Our mass intention this morning is offered in loving memory of Pauline Clee Padlow, a faithful chalice viewer who passed away earlier this month. As we do each week, we send our best wishes to all celebrating birthdays and anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. Happy birthday to Lorraine Thompson, a loyal chalice viewer who is marking her 93rd birthday this week. And a very happy birthday to Bishop Emeritus Timothy McDonnell, who is celebrating his birthday this coming Saturday. Best wishes to you, Bishop McDonald. And we send our best wishes to Bishop Byrne, who this past week marked his third anniversary of his Episcopal ordination and formal installation as the Bishop of Springfield. Ad multos anos, Bishop. We are also thinking of all those who are ill and homebound, especially viewers who are watching this from their hospital rooms, nursing homes, and extended care facilities. We pray for you and all who care for your needs. And we will have the names that you, our viewers, have sent in to us for today's Book of Remembrance. May their souls and the souls of all our faithful departed rest in the peace of Christ. After Mass today, Steve Kiltonic will take us to the Divine Mercy Shrine in Stockbridge to talk to the recently appointed Provincial of the Marian Religious Order, Father Chris Alar. so stay tuned for that. We now join our music ministers for our opening hymn as we greet our celebrant, Father James Nolte, and together celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday. King shall come when morning dawns and light triumphant breaks when beauty gives the eastern hills and life to joy awakes not as of old a little child 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And good morning, brothers and sisters. And welcome to this third Sunday of Advent. It's also known as Gaudete Sunday, Sunday to rejoice in the Lord. We hear in the gospel today about the preaching of John the Baptist and the coming of God. We pray to have our hearts open to receive the great gift that we will shortly receive at Christmas morning. And I'm sure as I've been introduced, but just in case, uh, my name is Father James from St. Patrick's Church. I'm here with my parishioners and our musicians and my deacon, Deacon David, uh, to celebrate Mass with you this morning. So in order to do so, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices. Almighty has done great. 
great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices. filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord.
And brothers and sisters, good morning. As I said, this is Gaudete Sunday. It's a Sunday to rejoice, to open our hearts and to take joy in the one that we're waiting for. Advent is a time of waiting and preparation. The question, of course, is now, as well as then, the time of Jesus, who are we waiting for? What kind of savior are we waiting for? Who is our God and who is he sending us? John the Baptist is a pivotal figure in the history of Judaism, in the history of the church. He's on the edge. He represents all of the Old Testament, all the Old Testament prophets, and he's also the one who foretells the Messiah. And in that time, they were ready for the Messiah. The, the people in Jesus' time were oppressed by a, a world-spanning power, the Romans, and there was no way that they could possibly defeat them militarily, that they could cast off their shackles, that they could free themselves from their oppression. And so they were waiting for God to send them a savior, a Messiah. And the Messiah was supposed to do three things. The Messiah was supposed to gather all of the lost Jewish people from all around the world back to the Holy Land, back to the Promised Land. And that was the first thing. He was supposed to gather back the tribes. And the second thing he was he was to restore the temple. So he was to restore proper worship in the temple and that God would be with his people, the people would be able to encounter God in the temple, and that would be by right worship, and the Messiah was going to lead that. So he was going to be a shepherd, he was going to be a priest. The last thing was that he was going to destroy their enemies. He was going to destroy the nations that, that oppressed Israel. And that in that way, he was a king, a warrior, a warrior king. And so the disciples at the time, and many people at the time, were looking for the Messiah to be the new David, that he would be like the great King David of old, and that just like David against the Goliath, the, the Goliath of Rome, with a sling stone and the power of God, he would bring down the Roman occupiers, he would bring down all of the enemies of Israel. That's who they were looking for. And it really boils down in these questions to two different views of the Messiah from the Old Testament. And it really boils down to, to two passages, one passage in the prophet Malachi and one passage in the prophet Isaiah. And I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, listen, we've been all over this Malachi, Isaiah thing. Do we have to hash it out again? I think it would be helpful just to look at it for one, one moment. So Malachi is a prophet who's writing about 500 years before Jesus is born. And Isaiah is a prophet who's writing about 800 years before Jesus is born. Now, Isaiah, in chapter 40 of Isaiah, he says, comfort, O oh, comfort my people. Bring comfort to my people who are suffering. Bring comfort to my people who are lost. I God will visit my people and I will bring them blessing. They have suffered and I will make it right. I will make them whole. And that's where the line comes from Isaiah 40. The line comes, I'm the voice of one crying out, cry out, cry out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. And that's what John says that he is. That's who John is, is that voice from Isaiah, comfort, comfort my people. But the people were looking for somebody like the prophet Malachi was talking about because Malachi was talking about in his prophecy about the great and terrible day of the Lord, day of fire and brimstone, a day of destruction of all the wicked people in the world, a day of God coming down and showing his wrath over the whole world. And that before that happened, God would send Elijah God would, literally, Elijah was one of the Old Testament prophets who got brought in a fiery chariot up to heaven while he was still alive, and he would return in the same way, and he would preach and prophesy to the people, and he would get them ready for this coming day of wrath. So when the people come out to John, 
because John is trying to get the people ready for the coming of the Messiah, they want to know, are you the Messiah yourself? You know, are you the one sent by God? Are you going to be the one who sets all these things right? And John says, no, 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 I'm not the Christ. I'm not the anointed one. I'm not the one that God is sending to make everything right. He said, well, are you then Elijah? Are you the one that's going to come before the day of wrath, before God comes and wipes out all these terrible Romans? John says, I'm not Elijah. And then they say, are you the prophet? And the prophet here refers to Moses, because in Deuteronomy, Moses is talking about the Messiah, and it seems like he's going to come as well before the Messiah comes. So are you Moses? Are you the prophet? He says, I'm not the prophet. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. And so he's saying from the very beginning that he's a different person than the one they're looking for. They're looking for Elijah, but he's this, this voice that Isaiah is talking about, a voice of comfort, a voice of getting ready for the Messiah, and that the Messiah is going to be a different kind of Messiah than the Messiah they're looking for. The Messiah is not going to be a Davidic king who kills all the Romans, brings back the lost tribes, resets temple worship. Jesus does all those things, but he doesn't do it in the way that people expect. He does bring back the tribes. He reconstitutes Israel in the 12 apostles. That's why there's 12 apostles for the 12 tribes. He reconstitutes Israel in the church. He also, he also clears or cleans the temple, but he cleans the temple by rebuilding the temple in his own body. That in his body, humanity and divinity meet. Humanity and divinity are one. True worship is in the spirit in each one of his followers, in each one of his disciples, because the Holy Spirit dwells in each one of us. We are each a temple of God. And he defeats our enemies. He doesn't defeat the Romans or the Assyrians or the Babylonians or the Egyptians or anybody else who oppressed Israel. He defeats the one enemy that oppresses us all. He defeats death defeats death in himself. He takes on our sinfulness, our brokenness, and defeats death, defeats sin in himself and wins the great victory over the enemy of all humanity. He's the true Messiah. But he's not the Messiah that, you know, Malachi is calling for in this great and terrible day of the Lord. And so when they ask, you know, John, are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? And John says, no, I'm a different kind of forerunner, just as he is going to be a different kind of Messiah. And in just a week's time, we're going to go to the stable and see our Messiah, our King, our warrior King, our God, in a little baby, in a little child. And the, the foretaste of it is here, when John says, I'm not the kind of forerunner that you're looking for because the Messiah is not the Messiah you're looking for. God has something so much greater than the superhero you're looking for. God is sending himself. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please stand together. Let us state what it is that we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father.
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. We call to mind our needs in joy, for in God we have the answer to all our prayers. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer for the church, that we may prepare the way of the Lord, removing the obstacles that block the grace we receive from God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may see justice and peace spring up in every nation, in every community, in every family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for glad tidings for the poor, healing for the brokenhearted, liberty for those held captive, and a year of favor for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who find it difficult to handle the stresses of this holiday season may realize the comfort and peace that Jesus offers to those who are burdened. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may refrain from every kind of evil and retain everything that is good, as, as Paul called upon the Thessalonians to do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember in prayer this morning Pauline Clipaldo, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for the names we enter into our book of remembrance this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you fill the hungry with good things. You send the rich away empty, and you lift up the lowly. May we realize the wisdom of your goodness as we address our needs to you, through the one whose coming closely approaches, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. So without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me safe to life everlasting.
Let us pray our spiritual communion prayer for those who are watching at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. I just want to say a word of thanks to our musicians, to Barbara and Jacob, and a th word of thanks for Deacon David and all of you who came this morning and all of you who are praying with us uh, out there. Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm Bishop William Byrne inviting you to radiate the light of Christ by making a gift to the annual Catholic Appeal. The ministries and agencies supported with your generosity help thousands of our neighbors throughout Western Massachusetts. On behalf of the people we serve, thank you. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Have you been to Greccio? The Italian town, about 60 miles from Rome, was chosen by St. Francis of Assisi as the site of the first known living nativity in 1223. To mark the 800th anniversary of this event and the subsequent popularity of nativity presentations, the cover story in the winter issue of the Catholic Mirror features interviews with two priests of the Springfield Diocese, conventual Franciscan father Brad Milunski, who explains how the entirety of the Catholic faith was embodied in that first living nativity, and Father Vitor Oliveira, whose collection of nativities from around the world reflects the universality of the Christmas message. A special feature highlights the upcoming Beacon of Faith Capital Campaign to help support the ministerial work of the Springfield Diocese and continue the task of bringing the gospel to life in the four counties of Western Massachusetts. In this issue, we also acknowledge the legal professionals who were honored at the diocese's annual Red Mass and the 20 catechists who received the Pope Pius X Award. In other local news, the Catholic Schools of Westfield received awards from the state's nonprofit security grant program. And St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Belchertown celebrates its 100th anniversary. With a life changed by her conversion to the Catholic faith, Diane Minalga is a super dedicated volunteer at St. Mary Parish in Longmeadow. Bishop Byrne shares a personal family story about a broken camel and how it reminds him of the unconditional love of the Savior. And those who cannot go to Greccio need not worry. Just as Jesus was present at the cave in Italy, so will he be with all of us, no matter where we celebrate his birth, on Christmas Day and every day that we care for each other as sisters and brothers of the Son of God. At the editor's desk, I'm Rebecca Drake. Earlier this year, the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception elected Father Chris Alar as their new provincial superior. Father Alar will lead the province for the next six years. He recently spoke with Steve Kiltonic about the state of the province and his plans for the future of the congregation. For the past nine years, Father Chris Alar has been known as the Marian Congregation's Father Joseph, an endearing term for the director of the Association of Marian Helpers. In this role, Father Aylor has been the head of the Marian Press, the publishing house of the Marians, which produces a wealth of religious material, such as brochures, pamphlets, prayer cards, and books, such as the Diary of St. Faustina. In addition, Father Aylor wrote and produced the popular Divine Mercy 101, Explaining the Faith DVD series, is a best-selling author, a regular host and guest on EWTN, and host of EWTN's Living Divine Mercy. Armed with an MBA and previous business experience prior to being ordained a priest in 2014, Father Aylor helped the community to achieve a debt-free status. In July 2022, the Michigan native was appointed by Rome as the Marian's interim provincial superior after Father Casimir Strzalek stepped down. In May 2023, the interim assignment ended, or so he thought. I said, um, now my time is done, I can go back to enjoying 
uh, being a priest, and no, that wasn't God's plan. <laughs> and so, on May 15, 2023, Father Ayer was elected by the community to serve a six year term as the new provincial superior of the seventh provincial chapter of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy province. As provincial superior, his responsibilities encompass the entire Marian congregation in the U.S. and Argentina, which includes 80 Marian priests and brothers in houses of formation in Washington, D.C., Illinois, and Ohio. I am in charge of all the brothers, the priests, and the activities that go on there. Financially, I have to deal with uh, decisions regarding the community, or regarding the priests and brothers, where they're assigned, what ministry they'll be working on. For the past 16 months, Father Ayo has held the title of Father Joseph and Provincial Superior, the first time a Marian has served in both capacities. However, Father Ayler would get some breathing room when he relinquishes his position as director of the Association of Marian Helpers and announces a successor. He will continue to host his Saturday Talks and Living Divine Mercy series, which airs on EWTN and is now in its third season. While his home will remain in Stockbridge, Father Ayler looks forward to the challenges of being on the road more. During this past summer, Father Ayler traveled to Australia and the Philippines, where he gave a retreat to 850 bishops and priests and blessed President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and the entire nation. In the religious life, uh, the superior always had, does visitations to the houses and the locations of the province. So I will get to go, and, and I love that because you really get to see what's happening with your brothers as they live in different locations. The fundraising efforts were initially focused on the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy. Father Aylor's goal is to create a better pilgrimage experience for the thousands who come to the shrine throughout the year and on Divine Mercy Sunday. So our shrine is very small. It only seats about 180 when it is full. And we've had days where we've had 500 people. And so we have the outdoor shrine, which is a, a blessing, but if it's winter time or if it's bad weather or if it's raining, people want to be inside and we don't have that capacity. So yes, we need to build new roads out in front. We need to build a new guest house. We need to build a new retreat center. We need to build a new shrine. Father Ayar's plans for Eden Hill include a Marian Museum and an improved welcome center where people will receive a better understanding of the Marians, the meaning of divine mercy, and the other on-site exhibits. A priority is upgrading the existing living quarters for guests, Marian priests, and future seminarians. Right now, our living quarters, our priests are, are segregated. We're living in five different buildings on this campus. Our guys come here and we don't have the rooms anymore. We have guys in hotels. We, you know, we have guests that can't stay. Room shortage is the number one, but also it's the condition. From the outside and on the base level, this building looks very nice, but when you get up into the rooms, holes in the walls, um, you know, broken heating, the, the, the climate control is not working. The Marion's first ever capital campaign has raised $29.6 million to date for construction of a new monastery and chapel on Eden Hill. Father Aylor hopes to break ground on the monastery next year with a completion date in 2025. We know that these, these are you know, millions of dollars and we know obviously that God's just not going to drop that from the sky. It's going to take um, effort, but most of all it's got to take trust. Father Aylor recently gave a talk during a meeting of the Catholic Men's Fellowship Group of Berkshire County at St. Charles Church in Pittsfield. Father Ayler plans to assign more priests for evangelization missions and retreats around the country in an effort to bring divine mercy to the people. He also wants to revive the parish mission team and support the Springfield Diocese whenever possible. Bishop Byrne has been an outstanding bishop for us, helping us and supporting us in our ministry of divine mercy. And so part of that ministry to the community involves opportunity for us as Marian priests to go out do masses at local parishes, do little talks, and just keep people engaged in the faith. Father Aylor says the Marians are entrusted with the responsibility to bring the divine mercy message and devotion to the world. Being the provincial superior of the Marian Fathers is a, is a tremendous honor, but yet a tremendous obligation because our community is just a small community, but God usually works through those you don't expect. Father Aylor asks for the support and prayers of everyone to carry out the Marian's mission. My message would be please pray for us as we pray for all of you as well, especially those who know the need for God's mercy. He hopes the message of divine mercy will continue to grow in a world that needs it now more than ever. In Stockbridge, I'm Steve Kiltonic. 
Thanks, Steve. Father Ayler certainly has a lot on his plate, and we wish him well in this new position. And thank you to Father James Nolte for celebrating our Mass today. We also appreciate Deacon David Bergeron and all the parishioners from St. Patrick's in South Hadley for joining us in our chapel today. A reminder that we will be holding a special retirement celebration Mass for Brother Terrence Scanlon on Thursday, January 11th at 5 p.m. here at St. Michael's Cathedral. All are welcome to attend and celebrate the 42 years of service Brother Terry has given to our diocese. Again, that's Thursday, January 11th at 5 p.m. And if you're not able to be here with us in the cathedral, you can see it on the January 14th Chalice of Salvation broadcast. As we quickly approach the Christmas holiday, you can find a listing of mass schedules for our diocesan parishes online at diospringfield.com. Org. And we want to thank those of you who have already responded to our Christmas appeal. Your generosity helps us to keep our television programs on the air. And if you'd like to make a donation, simply follow the link on iobserve.org. And again, we thank you so much for your consideration. A programming note, next week's Reel to Reel broadcast can be seen next Sunday, Christmas Eve morning at 6.30 which will include selections from the Singing Priest Christmas Concert taking place this afternoon at 2.30 at St. Francis of Assisi Church in Belchertown. Again, you can see highlights on Reel to Reel airing Christmas Eve morning at 6.30. And I invite you to tune in to the Chalice of Salvation that same day as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent with Father Doug McGonigal, pastor of Most Holy Redeemer Parish in Hadley, as our Mass presider. That's next Sunday morning at 10 for the Chalice of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. And please tune in the following day on Christmas morning at 11 a.m. for a broadcast of the Christmas Eve Mass from St. Michael's Cathedral, celebrated by Bishop William Byrne. Again, that's Christmas morning at the special time of 11 a.m. right here on 22 News WWLP. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday morning with us. May you be blessed with a happy and healthy week ahead.